I'm super excited about what God's doing. Super excited for how powerful he is. Please subscribe. We're doing a few videos a week, but it looks like I'm going to go to three or four. God keeps talking, and I'm just so excited and stoked, and I want to share that with you. Sorry if the beginning of my last word in September seemed a little um, ranty, but I'm just a huge believer on family, and we're the body of Christ, we're the army of Christ, and it's time to stand together. It's time to realize we're on the same team and just defend each other and stick out, stick up for each other. Amen? And um, so basically, we were talking about Trump and some different things like that, and uh, it's really exciting, really interesting. It's kind of scary, you know, but God spoke to me last night and he told me that Donald Trump won't be impeached. I know, right? Really cool. Um, a lot of prophetic people have said this, just so you know. Um, from what I can find, Kim Clement, he prophesied in 2007 that Trump would do two terms, which means that if he does two terms, he's not not going to get impeached in his first turn. And um, Sadhu, he prophesied over a year ago, I watched it live, two terms for Trump. Um, Mark Taylor said that Trump will be impeached and that he'll do two terms. And then also Kat Kerr, she prophesied two terms for Trump, two terms for Pence, which is cool, I agree with, I'm on that train. But it was still really good for us to pray for Trump. I believe the Lord was on that. I believe the Lord took Kilpatrick's word. He sent it around the world, close to 900,000 views. And if you watch Kilpatrick's word from Sunday, he says himself, he's not the one who released that word. One of his affiliates did, and he said that the Holy Spirit's the one that wanted, the one that wanted to get it out. And that link is in the bio, folks. And I super encourage you to watch it. He covers so many things. He covers so many things that are, that are on the heart of the body of Christ. Like when you watch it, you're like, finally, somebody is speaking up. Somebody is addressing the spirit of Jezebel, which is also even in the church. As he mentions, he, he talks about even Trump's flaws, but he talks about how he prayed for Obama. And if you look at my September word, I prayed for Obama, you know, just he confirmed so many things to me. It was so, so encouraging, so amazing. Um, well, what's going to happen is I stumbled on one of those videos, one of those compilation videos of all those people who said Trump's never going to make it. The specialists, the experts, there was like 20 or 30 of them. That link is in the Bible, in the bio also. But take a little peek. That Trump should not be in this race. He's an absurdity. He is a travesty. Donald Trump will never be elected president of the United States. Donald Trump is a here today, gone tomorrow candidate for president of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to be president of the United States. Uh, ever respectful of the fact that the people have not voted, he's not going to be president of the United States. Let's be clear, Donald Trump will lose the election. I mean, he had a really good chance to be different and really have a chance to change things, but yeah. he, he doesn't do the work. He's lazy. But yeah, folks, so this is what's going to happen again. All these people are going to be played the fool again, lined up that when, he, when Trump does not get impeached and when he continues on. But even Kilpatrick says in his video, which is nice because he brings so much credibility to the table, but he says that when the Jezebel spirit doesn't get its way, that it makes your life a living hell. And it really has for President Trump, if you look at it. And um, also that it even continues on into the church, which is um, brings up my next point. So there's a lot of prophetic people emerging, like I said in my last word, and I said a few months ago. And my personal opinion, why it's being so successful on YouTube, and even Kilpatrick says it in his message, sorry to go back to that, but he has a lot of credibility. He says, because pastors and preachers aren't saying what God wants them to. They're not addressing the real issues. They're giving comfortable messages. They're not talking about 
what's going on in the country. And that's why I think the prophetic people who've kind of been forced into social media um, are so successful because the body of Christ is dying for a real conversation. They want to know what's going on. They want to know the word of the Lord. They want to know what we're up against. But just to encourage you, he's not going to be that. And that was, like I said, I've heard it a lot. I'm honoring those people who have said it before me, but it was just really exciting for God to kneel down, not kneel down, but bend over and just speak those words to me. All right, so the Lord spoke this to me today, and it correlates with my first September word. And he was just saying it to me this afternoon, so I'm going to go out and say it. And he said that all prophetic people glean from previous generations of prophetic people, from their books, from their messages. And he was just saying that, like, look at all the musicians today, secular, like even Ed Sheeran is getting sued right now for copying other people's music. Michael Jordan said the only person he thinks might be able to beat him is Kobe Bryant because he stole all of his moves. The reason I'm bringing that up is because people take ideas and things and revelations and, and strategies and skills in, a place, in places that are really protected and they do it a lot more in the church where there's even less boundaries. I'm a pastor's kid, I'm a youth pastor now, and we're all guilty of it. We all borrow revelations and, and messages and nuggets that other people paid the price for. It's just interesting that God's putting this on my heart to share, but look at the Bible. It's the most beautiful, perfect book that's already written. God covered it all, pretty much whatever he thought was necessary. It's fantastic, right? But so many preachers and prophets and evangelists and speakers, they all pull from what God already said. They all take from it. Just like musicians and athletes, prophetic people, they borrow from the Smiths Wogglesworths, the Kim Clements, all these people before them. And I got to tell you a story. So... I had a young person I was raising up. I, I work with a lot of interns and young people. And there was a competition. And he took a piece that we were working on together, but it was mostly me working on it. And he submitted it to a competition and he won. And a lot of you people, or even me or whatever, you'd be like, oh, that's wrong or whatever, which, you know, technically it is. But, um,. I just started laughing. I started laughing because I'm like, I've done that to so many people. And I was thinking about God and how we take his word and even all the prophets and prophetic people, it's not like they're amazing or anything that I say is amazing. We're only taking and copying and pulling from the Messiah, the God, the God of the universe, the King Revelator, the Word of God. Like I said, I'm not totally sure why I'm sharing this, but it's just funny. It's what a father would do. That's why I didn't get mad at the, the, the kid who took my stuff, because I laugh because I do that to God all the time. He shares his revelations. He gave his word. He must laugh. All the people who interpret his word, all the people who he gives prophetic words to, and we got our diapers on, and we're acting like, oh, I'm so discerning. Oh, I hear so well, but we are just quoting what the sweet God of the universe told us. We're just quoting the beautiful word of God. You know, that's what's so funny about it. And this ties into the first September word. So nobody can really say anything because we all plagiarize God. You know, pretty funny. Um, anyways, just check out Kilpatrick's message in the bio. It's fantastic. I wish I, I can't even recollect all the things that he said. And we still have a long way to go. But Trump is not going to be impeached. And God is going to raise up prophetic people out, a whole battalion, army of them. And um, I was talking to my mom. She's a big influence on my life if you haven't caught on by now. But God's kind of done with the one-man show. 
and he's going to raise up a ton of people. He's going to raise up nobodies. If you don't believe that, read your Bible. Everyone he used was pretty much a nobody. And they even called Jesus. They're like, who is this? Is this Joseph, the carpenter's son? This is the business God's in because he doesn't share glory. I was reading through Gideon re recently, and he's like, You're the le he's the least of his family. He was a coward. He hid and threshed a wheat in the wine vat, you know? But anyways, um, God's doing awesome things. I hope this blesses you. And um, I'm just super excited. That just touched my heart. But I still think it was important that these people and everyone prayed for Trump and prayed for our country. And the next generation, to quote John Kilpatrick, he says that they're going to speak the truth and they're not going to say what people want them, they're going to say, want them to say. They're going to say what God tells them to say. Anyways, God bless. Hope this blesses you.